Final Game Review of Call of Duty United Offensive Continuing on a historical look on what Call of Duty started as brings us to the expansion pack for Call of Duty Classic, Call of Duty United Offensive, which makes sense considering the game is almost a carbon copy of it with the three campaigns playable through another series of American, British, and Soviet battles, with another three faceless soldiers who are so inconsequential that the only one I remember offhand is the Soviet character Yuri, who didn't have a last name, oddly enough. Anywho, the gist of this game's story is that the Americans are fighting at the Battle of the Bulge, accomplishing various objectives in order to advance the success of the army that they are fighting for which ends at the final difficult mission of defending a house from infinite respawn enemies and various panzer tanks. See, in this game, every campaign ends with a difficulty spike for the final mission, which I guess makes sense despite being incredibly annoying. Anyway, the British start by flying B-17 Flying Fortresses to a bombing run over Germany, but are shot down later by the Luftwaffe and flak guns defending the area, and the surviving British soldiers need to escape behind enemy lines, and along the way they end up obliterating a train bridge and a gun placement inside of a dam, and then get away on gunboats back to the main battleship. And for some strange reason, a United Offensive Grey Matter decided that the British characters this time around needed to be a lot more stereotypical than first time around, with your brigade all in flat caps and sweaters for some reason, and half of them having the first name Van, along with one peculiar soldier who decided to go into combat in his tuxedo. Even just looking at a screenshot, you can tell the developers just wanted to double the amount of Britishness in this campaign. Well, after the fully realized racism, we find our way to the Soviet campaign, which is set before the Battle of Stalingrad when Germany was invading the Soviet Union in their effort to decisively destroy it, and in this campaign it takes place in the recaptured effort of Kharkov to push the Germans back from over Russia. This campaign included the return of the tank vehicle section from COD Classic, and this time around was actually designed by actual people and not malfunctioning computers running a half-coded Windows 95, and despite the tank still having the whole turret dread disconnect in controls, with the WAS controls on PC, it actually steers halfway decently, and with the continuing AI retardation of the enemy panzers, it's still a cake to finish this section, but what I want to tell you about is the final part of the final campaign of United Offensive, because it takes place in a rail yard with in Kharkov. This mission includes the infinite respawn enemies from back in the American section, but since they're so spread out and all over the place, there's almost zero idea where most of the shots that get you are even coming from, so defending yourself is going to be left up to the heart of the cards, and throughout this mission you have to take out five enemy panzers that appear to fuck shit up with either the panzer fouls or the available flak guns, which you think would end the mission because they no longer have armored division support, right? Well, guess what? Here's how Grey Matter thought this mission should end. Instead of the enemy, you know, retreating after the tank division's demise, they instead swarm your side of the battlefield and decide to go for broke and you have to defend yourself for two minutes before the mission actually ends, and don't think that you can just hide under the train for an easy win because the infinite respawns will swarm you in your hiding place and take you out before you know what the hell happened, so this section's difficult no matter how you slice it, and here's the kicker. If you happen to fail at this point, then you have to go all the way back and start over at the start of this section, effectively wasting 5 to 15 minutes of your time, and since this mission is buttfuck hard, 90 minutes of your 8 hours of gameplay is going to be dedicated to shooting panzers. Oh, and constant Stuka attacks, because Grey Matter didn't think this mission was hard enough without them. However, even with that final fuck you to the player at the end of United Offensive, I actually want to personally praise Grey Matter Studios for taking the original game that Infinity War crapped out with Call of Duty Classic, and actually making a cohesive and albeit more enjoyable experience, because while the final mission was awful, they were able to fix the previous tank vehicle section problems, they removed the horrible set piece stuff and instead replaced them with confidence turret sections that were at least well made, and they added a bunch of mechanics to the formula like flamethrowers, gun variety, while even going so far as to add a sprint mechanic, which I find incredibly useful back in my days of playing Halo Reach deathmatches. And finally, they were able to fix Infinity Ward's AI fuckups, which at their lowest point had me getting insta-kill from my own AI partner because he shot a wall with a rocket launcher, and most notably of all, they fixed the difficulty problems, which made getting shot with a machine gun hurt a lot less than getting hit with a rifle, which means that getting hit with multiple shots by one is comparable to the other, which balances out the game a lot better, and the enemy AI is no longer able to accurately shoot you from 500 yards away within a second of poking your head out, and it feels like I'm actually fighting human beings instead of gun-toting robots. 
Grey Matter even going that step further to outdo Infinity Ward's storytelling ability by creating the best alternative to having a game with campaigns not connected with each other, it just does them as self-enclosed campaigns one after the other, because interlocking them means that none of the stories in COD Classic had a beginning or an ending, but in United Offensive, because they're all in separate boxes, that means the player can actually have some drive to play through these stories because they have an end game. So, the new developer was able to fix problems, add useful game mechanics, and develop a much better version of the same thing than the original studio. This actually reminds me of when Funimation was hired to fix the problems that 4Kids caused for the One Piece dubs. And even though this game is still the same series of shooting galleries broken up by set-piece minigames, it's definitely the better coming out from the comparison and something I would actually be able to recommend as a game, which is all the stranger considering that United Offensive is the expansion pack to Classic, and then it goes so far as to be the same length as the original game. So without further ado, here are the final scores for United Offensive, and hopefully the next game, Finest Hour, will be able to pick up where the series leaves off and runs with it, but until then, I'll leave you as I always do with a victory for gamers and hope to see you then. Maybe it'll actually have some bosses in it this time.